Hey guys, it's Asim Sharma, Training Manager from Solfarm Consulting. Again, I do hope you're all doing well. Um, I have spoken about this before, but I want to specifically home in on how to crack an interview. And I'm not saying that this is a foolproof method by any means, because there are many factors involved in the selection of candidates. And it's not necessary that even if you do really well, um, even if your performance is stellar, still there can be issues with the hiring process so maybe you know the competition has been very stiff or for some reason demographic issues or it could be innumerable factors which lead to you not ultimately being shortlisted or selected so don't feel bad about it but to maximize your chances of being selected what can you do so there are some typical questions which actually i i think a lot of us would find quite boring but let's go through some of them and I've taken many interviews myself and I tend to have an innovative approach to um, interviewing people. So tell me something about yourself. Now what does that exactly mean? If someone asks me that, I usually reciprocate that question with um, are you referring professionally or personally? So in India specifically people tend to be a little more personal and they will ask you about your family makeup, who's in your family, how many siblings do you have, that's not really uh, the case in the West um, so it's always good to check and if you ask or counter question someone politely uh, which shows that you're trying to clarify something and remember I made a video about clarification to avoid any misunderstanding then that is a good thing to do that shows that you have that ingenuity and that um, uh, you know inquisitiveness to make sure that you are giving the most appropriate answer so that's a good start if someone says where do you see yourself in five years time um, be honest. So, if someone asks me, and this was maybe five years ago, I would have simply said, um, in a leadership position, um, as a manager, as a supervisor, and people may say that, what if you don't get that? Then I would say that, well, I would have to question myself, because what have I been doing then for the past five years? Is it something to do with the company that's not allowing you those opportunities to grow? What do we mean by growth? Or is it something intrinsic that you are not doing something correctly the way you should? So either way, being promoted, everyone wants to have a salary hike, everyone wants to progress. And a lot of people are natural born leaders and they just don't realize it. So that's another thing to bear in mind. Um, thirdly, when answering this question about where do you see yourself in five years time, now the fact that, for instance, I'm a training manager, what more could I do? I could also be heading the operations of something. I could be, um, you know, contributing to a new kind of invention within the business, whatever the landscape may be. But now, coming on to some of the most common questions where people trip up on. Um, questions regarding what I would say reasoning. So, you know, there was a, a question lately um, asked by a, a someone when an interview was being held a friend was being interviewed and um, they just looked at me in absolute kind of awe thinking what do I do now so the question was and I don't mean to plagiarize um, you are in a dark room you can't see anything there is a bag of socks red green and blue they're all mixed how many pairs do you have to pick up or how many socks, I should say, do you have to pick up to ensure that you have at least one pair of matching socks? I'm not very good with reasoning, but my answer was six, because at least then, statistically, according to probability, uh, you have um, a chance of having or selecting at least two socks, i.e. one pair, which uh, belongs to the same color. Uh, the person was quite phased and uh, they weren't really able to answer the question which is okay because even I was not very clear but the point is it's not so much about the answer that you give personally I think but the rationale even if it's wrong so if you have that rationale that listen I think it's two I just need to pick up a pair of socks and they say why again you say probability because there's a, a you know if you pick up two so then you have a probability of two in six that you would select one pair but I say select all six then you have you maximize your probability to have at least two matching socks at ie one pair so being able to rationalize and explain even if your reasoning is not necessarily correct and it may even be flawed 
that's a good thing because that shows the confidence, right? So that's that's something that you should really consider doing. What else do we have? Um, why this organization? And you know what? Let's be honest. A lot of organizations are quite similar. Let's say that you are applying to work as um, let let's let's take something more kind of specific HR you want to apply to be a HR you have a background in HR you have the qualifications now whether you apply to company A B or C your duties are going to be very similar you you'd have two types of HRs either the global resource organization people who hire talent or the people who are within the existing pool of candidates and you know deal with all sorts of issues so let's 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 talk about the first thing. So hiring talent, you'll have targets. It's a kind of sales thing, finding the resources, networking, etc. Then coming on to the second kind of role uh, where you are dealing with existing employees, grievances, concerns, salary issues, um, you know, maybe promotions, demotions, hiring, firing, whatever it may be. Why this organization? So, yeah, I went on your website, I found that you've been here for this amount of time and, you know, your company values. And a lot of companies have values, don't they? They'll say that, look, we are very loyal, we have this integrity and all that. Whether that actually holds true within practice is a different matter. But uh, it's not that you have to sound different. If someone asks me why this company, I'll say, look, I need a job. I've applied to other companies as well. The fact that you've invited me and given me this privilege to promote excuse me, prove myself, um, I think that's already a good stepping stone. So I can see myself working with this company and depending on how this interview goes, whether you like me and whether I'm able to join and I don't see why I wouldn't be able to, I would like to, you know, see, th th see things through, sorry, and take this forward. So that, that's a kind of, you know, a positive and um, what I would say a, a politely but assertive way of approaching things that look, I'm here, you've invited me, clearly you have an interest in me, you're giving me a chance, and this is what I want to do, rather than talking about all the other things. Um, and finally, when someone asks you about your strengths and weaknesses, or talk about a time where something weird happened, maybe, I used to ask, give me a, an example of a, 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 an encounter in life where you felt embarrassed or scared. It's not a very common question, but it yields very interesting answers. Um, and I really don't care what the person says, they may say that, look, uh, um, I've, I've had this myself. Um, um, I, I was starting a, a new job, this was about eight years ago, and um, while I was walking, um, my, my part of my trouser leg tore, it caught on to something. And it tore in such a way that it was not something that you can uh, just, um, you know, get along with that someone may not notice it kind of tore halfway through which was quite embarrassing um i happened to be organized i had a safety uh, safety pin so I, I put it on the underside no one really noticed so um you know that that's something i've given as an example in training but people have come up with all sorts of ideas or i should say all sorts of experiences it's not about what you say it's how you say it so look this is what happened to me, this is how it affected me, this is what I did to mitigate the circumstances. And what did I learn from it as well? These are the things that you need to bear in mind. And in terms of your strengths and weaknesses, your strengths may be, I don't know, you're loyal, you're dedicated, you're hardworking, whatever it may be, same kind of stuff. Which can also turn into your weaknesses as well. Sometimes you're overly meticulous, which means that you sometimes don't know where to kind of detach yourself and take a break and say, hey, I need to relax, I've become a workaholic that can become your weakness rather than saying that you're unreliable because no one wants anyone who's unreliable. Anyway, I've been ranting on for almost 10 minutes. I hope I haven't spoken too fast, full of energy clearly today. Um, I do hope you found this useful. For further tips, please do stay subscribed or subscribe to this channel. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please do put them below. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability and respond. Please also follow our LinkedIn posts. Uh, they are often posted by our marketing specialist, Ravi, who makes uh, wonderful images and designs things to make things very simple for you to understand. Written content is posted by myself. Again, if you have any comments, you can put them there and I will respond to the best of my ability. Find us also on Insta, Facebook and Telegram. I do look forward to seeing you on our courses. Till next time, please do take care. Thank you very much and bye-bye.